Well, good morning everyone. Trout season's just around the corner. It's uh, next Saturday at 12.01am, so I just thought I'd run through what I'm going to be taking up for the starts of the seasons and see what happens as uh, in terms of equipment and what I'm going to be lugging around. So let's start with rods. I had four, three rods last season and I snapped one up on the Latrobe River out in uh, West Gippsland. So uh, this season I'm going to be taking out the Confluence rod. This is a two-way rod. It's a 12-foot or a 10.5-foot, and, and, and uh, already I'm going to make it my go-to rod. I've had enough places where I needed a little less length to um, try and get in to a few very, very brushy spots. So that's going to become my go-to rod. Just here is the Watershed 300Z. Now this is a, again, it's a zoom or a two-way rod. It's uh, from memory 8 foot 8 inches and then going up to 10 foot 2 inches. And uh, yes, I haven't taken the plastic off the handle yet. I'll just leave that there until I really need this rod. But there's a couple of little headwaters that I want to examine here and there. And uh, that's where I'll be carrying this. And of course the, uh, the confluence. Here's the big Tenkara Amago rod. Now this is uh, a fixed length rod 410 centimeters or as you can see there 13 foot 6 um, I've already got my old Rayco spool holder all set up to go and there's a large size universal rod cap uh, that rod will get a little bit of use here and there mostly going to save it now for longer uh, for wider rivers and less brushy areas I found that really uh, the Nissan uh, zero sum here, the 7 to 3 ratio and 360 or 12 foot rod. This just became the rod I was carrying pretty much everywhere. The action's lovely. Uh, you can read all the reviews about it. I mean, everyone raves about how good the zero sum is. But uh, I really want to give the Confluence rod a good workout. So we'll see what happens with that. Now you'll see that I've got a, a uh, wooden walking stick. So let's pick that fellow up. Pick that fellow up. Now, yes, it's a wooden walking stick, as you can see just there. Um, I just have it attached to my belt as I'm walking, with um, just tied on with some bungee cord there, or um, I think they call it shock cord over at Bunnings. But uh, this has become my wading staff, and it's become really, really, really handy. Um, I can't believe how often I've ended up using it. Um, also very useful for knocking on big logs as you're crawling over them to scare away snakes. And uh, I got that idea straight off Tom Davis, uh, his wonderful Taton Tenkara blog. I talked to him and uh, I saw his waiting staff, he told me more about it, and I adapted this walking stick which I think cost me $4 or something at a um, second hand shop. Okay, here is my, well, my front bag or bum bag. Just uh, got it very nicely. On top of it is a little monomaster to um, collect up all my used broken tippet. Inside it, my flies. Sorry, just trying to do this one handed. So you can see there um, plenty of red tags, some stimulators, some uh, Frank Sawyer original style with the copper wire. Pheasant tail nymphs and a couple of um, shop bought stimulators. The shop bought stimulators are these uh, ones just in here. Um, but uh, uh, these stimulators just here are tied by Pat Parisian over at NSSFC. And uh, the other ones are all tied by me, so I've started fly tying. Uh, what else is inside the bag? Um, I have these yellow plastic bags. I was going to use these as markers if I was getting onto a really brushy stream. I haven't ended up using them yet, so they may end up getting discarded during the season. Uh, just to hold any wet flies that I've changed over, I've just got this little plastic egg. Um, I was using it, it came with a bandage originally, but I've saved it. Uh, yep, some floatant, as you can see there, I'm packing Loon's Aquel, just because it's handy. I use Trout Hunter, uh, oops, sorry, I'll just get that better there you go trout hunter six times tippet don't carry anything else the nylon does me just fine oops bit of a tangle now whistles 
This is my old style whistle. As you can see there, I don't know how old it is. Um, let's see if there's something here. The Acme City Whistle from England. I've got no idea if it's 50 years old or 100 years old, but I carry it in case I hurt myself. I can blow on that and hopefully summon um, some passers-by to come to my aid. However, I've just been given, well, I just received as part of a deal, a diver's whistle, all in orange plastic, uh, dull orange plastic too. And I'm more tempted to actually carry that, one, because it's lighter, two, because it won't shine and reflect. But uh, if I think I'm pulling out my whistle and I'm blowing hard on this whistle, I don't think I'm going to be worried about trout getting spooked. Uh, I think I've probably broken a leg or an arm or I've been bitten by a snake. Uh, that's just a sunglasses cover. Snap-on line carrier, absolutely essential. I've actually got two, uh, but I'll just carry one. You've already seen that. I have a set of line, line clippers, line nippers, and it actually has a little um, nail knot tying tool just there. You can see that. And I've also got a little, what used to be called a mega touch knife. Now they're just called a little safety knife. That's all you need just to cut line. I'm not using it to cut down branches or trees or anything. It's just to purely to cut line if I feel that the nippers aren't doing the job. I've got a set of these. I'm pretty sure they're Dr. Slick's ones. Yep, they are Dr. Slick. Uh, to get um, deeply buried hooks out of trout. Again, from Tom Davis over at Tayton Tankara. Little homemade line spool. You can see there it's 10 foot. Um, and that should be um, Oni's level line number four. I've got uh, some first aid gear. I've got some band-aids, both large size and small size, all safely tucked up in there. Uh, as a first aider, I think it's absolutely essential that you carry some gear with you. So um, that's just there to, to help me streamside. I've got a full kit out in the car. So hopefully I can get back to the car and then patch myself up. Daryl from NSSFC recommended that I get myself a set of uh, cleats. Well, for the Taggarty River to get over those huge logs that you see me clambering over. So these are rock fishermen's cleats or spikes set there and they have their own nice little um, pouch which I can just attach onto my belt. So I've got a Daiwa One Touch expanding net. I'll just pop it out. It's not very big. As you can see, there it isn't there in my hand. But when you get it going, of course, nothing ever works when you want it. So, whoa, there it goes. So there's a nice little 25 centimeter diameter net. So very nice. Packs away again. And something else that's really important is hydration. So um, you can see over here in uh, both of the, this one's completely empty. I ended up sliding my mobile phone into this one. But in this uh, ammo pouch, I've got my Nalgene hip flask. There it is just there. And uh, I keep that full of water and I take sips as I go, obviously. Um, how many ounces is it? For all you Americans, I can't tell you. Uh, oh, there it is. It's got, uh, what, 10, 10 fluid ounces just there. But of course, me being an Australian, it's 300 mil. So very important to stay hydrated. And uh, obviously, I can take two if I need to, and I do indeed have two. And uh, just for the drive up and back, I've got my Three Rivers Tenkara cap. So, trout season, it's just around the corner. I'm excited. You can see my rig out there. So, thanks for watching. And we'll see you out on the rivers.